right, so welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, AD Summer for Four. So today, guys, we're gonna talk to you guys about Manchester City's future because we have a lot to unpack in this video. So, like I said, if you're new out here, consider the watching the whole video, and of course, like and subscribe, guys. Like and subscribe. You guys should already know that by now. Anyways, I'm gonna leave the link in the description below if you guys want to read this. Let's go ahead and read this, guys. So, Manchester City's uncertain future is perhaps the price for all the 15 years that came so easily. Manchester City have had a good run. The journey to the top of the English football over the past 15 years has been almost uh, frictionless. All they had to do was spend a billion of pounds, and it should be said, spend cleverly. And they've had six Premier League titles, two FA Cups, and six League Cups to show for it. Even as City spent their way top, they have faced barely any pushback until now. The closest they came was when UEFA banned them from the Champions League for two years in 2020, and even then the court, court arbitration for sport overturned that ban five minutes later. That's going to be very key, guys. Keep that in the back of your head, guys. City looked untouchable. Impervious to criticism. Imp um, impervious to shame. With the momentum and self-assurance that comes from never having to worry about having been told what you can and cannot do. This is until Monday, lunchtime, when the Premier League announced City was facing more than 100 charges of alleged branches of its financial rules. 100 branch, 100 charges, guys. 100. That is insane. The club said they were spending a surprise by the issuing of these eligible ages and look forward to this matter being put to rest once and for all. Yeah, that was said on the Manchester City official website, guys. I just checked a few minutes ago before even recording this. We do not know what the commission will decide or when, but we do know that for the Premier League, never enthusiasm or regular troops to take this step is, for its hungry itself, hugely significant. No members club is willingly going to war in public with its richest member and by far its most successful recent owners. Recent years, sorry. If the charges are uphill, then this era of success will be for forever remembered as having been illicitly achieved. The roar for spending money that other teams didn't even have and breaking rules that other teams followed. City have been the greatest team of their generation on the pitch, but it might end up being it might end up being judged to have been um, because they enjoyed a tilted playing field often. Fair competition is meant to be the essence of sport. If the commission do not find does does find against City, many people will mark them forever as cheats. They'll have nowhere to hide from that judgment, and they'll not be able to appeal to CAS either. So this time around, they cannot even appeal the court of arbitration, because unlike last time, they were able to appeal it. This time around, they cannot appeal it. This kind of feels similar to Juventus in some ways as well. Um, I don't know if it's going to discuss about Juventus here in this article, but um, in some ways it is. Okay, um, City insists on Monday afternoon that there is a comprehensive body of irre irrefutable evidence that exists in support of its position. Some City fans may naturally bristle against the allegations and the scrutiny and even feel City are being singled out for special attention. But the simple reality is that City and their fans have to take the rough with the smooth. Over the past 15 years, they've enjoyed moments that would never be possible if the al Nahi family had not bought the club in 2008 and used it to promote Abu Dhabi. Beating Manchester United in the FA Cup summer 2011, winning that first trophy, Sergio Aguero's immortal winner against Queen's Park Rangers in 2012. The football man Emmanuel Pellegrini's first season when Yaya Torre played unlike uh, any Premier League midfielder before. Since the 100-point title season under Pep Guardiola, the title race with Liverpool the year after, Ilkay Gundogan's rescue job against Aston Villa nine months ago. Even if City or Judge have cheated and if the titles are stripped, the memories of these moments will survive for City fans, no matter how how they may have won. Liverpool and Manchester United fans, whose teams were beaten by City to titles, they may have unfairly won, would be entitled to feel cheated, though. Under Guardiola, City have played football from another planet, setting new records for the most points, wins, and goals of Premier League season. Not one, only have they forced removal of banner at Old Trafford, counting their trophy down, they have won uh, five Premier League titles since United's last and won nine times at Old Trafford in the past 11 years. Even without the Champions League, the dreams of almost every City fan have almost been made real. Through this time, City fans have been blessed with some of the greatest players in the game. Carlos Tevez, David Silva, Torre, Aguero, Kevin O'Brien, Bernardo Silva, and now Erling Haaland. Clearly, none of these would have been signed for City if they didn't have the financial power Abu Dhabi behind them. So if there is a punishment, even a heavy one, and it feels like in this era, Manchester City is coming to an end. No one can have a legitimate grievance or complaints. Say they've already won more and gone further than anyone would have imagined when represented Abu Dhabi about the club from Ch Dax Kishin Shuanti in 2008. Just because City looked untouchable, it does not mean they were. But whatever happens for me, maybe this will be a point where City fans started to do some long overdue untangling because the club and the ownership are not the same thing. Even if it 
becomes increasingly difficult to distinguish the two. And even if fans have under, understandably enjoyed the past 15 years, the wins and the trophies in football, there were no under obligation to defend the owners, politics, or the methods that brought City to this point. Manchester City uh, FC existed uh, for 114 years before they even become a proxy band of Abu Dhabi and a soft power tool for human rights abusing regime. They have a history that is rich and textured as anyone else. The glory, the joy, mercy, the um, the threat, thrill of Gillingham, the personal triumph of Ben Trotman, Tr- Tr- the pr- frustrated promise of Rodney and Marsh, the magic of Georgie Kindle is the power of being really the farce of being relegated as they held up the ball in the corner by the long years of fierce swells. Manchester City fans, um, I'm obviously not going to show you guys the video for copyright reasons, but you guys can watch the video if you guys want. Uh, Manchester City fans have loyally stuck with their club through the difficult years. Mayan Road normally held thirty, uh, held crowds of thirty thousand. With City were in, in what is now League One, and now they spend the past fifteen years enjoying the good times. They're entitled to do that, having never chosen who the club, never having never chosen who owned the club or how they operate. There is also a new generation of City fans who also remember, remember nothing other than six of the names of Jason. Van Borough, Missouri, Oduni, La Bredebri, Buster, Buster Phillips, and Christian and Gaunu will mean very little to them. But just because just because they have to work to remember something does not mean it's not there. You have to appear hard at City to tell the difference between the owners and the club. Past the bedroom, past the name of the stadium, past the shirt sponsorship, past the experience Abu Dhabi, past Emirates Palace, Abu Dhabi, past Ex- Expo 2020 in Dubai, past Manchester, thank you, Sheikh Mansour. But the essence of this club, the fans, their family, the history and the memories existed longer before the owner showed up and will outlast them too. That might sound remote now, and it should be clear that there's no suggestion whatsoever that Abu Dhabi is coming to an end. Mayor is coming to an end. But this time last year, who could have imagined Chelsea with that Roman Bromwich? And now he's gone and the club retains the same essential carriage it always had. No one knows what the future holds for Manchester City. We don't even know if they'll retain a hold of the recent past. But maybe an uncertain future is the right price. An opportunity of 15 years where everything comes to too easily. Came too easily. That was a great article. That was a great article. So I'm going to give you guys quickly my opinion real here. It's going to be around two minutes, guys. Very, very brief. I'll leave you the timestamp below if you just want to hear my opinion. Um, so let's go ahead and discuss, guys. Let's discuss. This will be very, very brief, guys. Very, very brief. Mm, guys, um, I, I think this is very interesting. And I think it just shows how Manchester City financial fair play, you know, it, it was always going to come up to them, you know. And as the article said, they spent a way that was very clever. And I feel like the difference between them and, them and Juventus is that they at least spend the money in a more efficient manner, whereas Juventus didn't really spend their money in the right manner. Needless to say, though, they're going to get punished. And unlike Juventus, they cannot appeal it. So they're going to get a punishment whatsoever, and there's no chance they can appeal it. Now, we don't know what the punishment is going to be. There's going to be either three things. Either they're going to get a fine, they're going to get relegated, or they're going to get a point deduction. Now, I'm going to say this right now, guys. I don't believe they'll get relegated. Because, yes, the charges have been that bad, but I don't believe the Premier League will do it. Because that will take a... I don't think Manchester City have committed that much fraud activities to be considered. Although, that being said, I wouldn't be surprised. You know, And I also feel as though that even if they were to relegate them, it would destroy the Premier League in reputation. I think the Premier League marketability will go down a lot of club teams may not even look at the Premier League like that, and it could really damage the league. So, I think that's a worst case scenario. Now, there's a point deduction. Sort of like what happened to Juventus. They could suffer a 15 point deduction. Now, in my opinion, if they do get a 15 point deduction, that will pretty much ruin their whole chances of winning the title. And you would probably have to give Arsenal the title if that happens. Now, do they still get top four? To be honest with you, I wouldn't put it past them. I wouldn't put it past them because Manchester City, they've always got a good knack of getting top four. And they would finish, I think, eighth, just above Liverpool and Chelsea, which is really interesting. So that could be a possibility. And then the last one is a fine. Fine of a decent amount of money, maybe like $500,000. And you know, Manchester City can afford the fine. They, you know... They could, they, you could give them a, a huge fine. They'll still be able to pay it off. You know, it's not a big deal. They, they have the money, man. They have the money. So in my opinion, if we're being fair here, they should get a point deduction. Now, if I'm being realistic, and if I'm seeing things from their point of view, I think a fine is going to probably happen. I don't think there's going to be anything concrete significant going to happen. But we'll have to wait and see, guys, in the coming days, because a lot can happen. So 
that's going to pretty much be it for today, guys. Um, I hope you guys did enjoy this video. Um, like I said, I needed this article. I think this article does a good job of explaining what Manchester City have been accused of and what their future can hold. And it also really does a good job a job in discussing the past as well to get on you know, talk about the memories they've had. So, you know, like I said, we'll, we'll wait and see what happens. So I hope you guys did enjoy this video, guys. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. Guys, if you're new on here, consider hitting that like button. Hit the subscribe button as well. Comment below your thoughts, comment section below. And I'll see you guys later. Peace out.